Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. Now I do work really hard on these videos, finding the most important information I can and presenting it to you guys to give you the best head start when this game goes into live. The ultimate goal is that when the game goes live, you know exactly what you want to do and how to do it so you've got a head start getting out there into space and doing really well. Of course that benefits me because I'll have a corporation open as well um, and, and obviously you can come join me and help out with that. Now what really helps with this content is if you're enjoying it, hit like on the video. Let me know in the comment section below. Consider subscribing to this channel and sharing it with other pilots you know, other people playing Eve Echoes. Tell them about these videos. It also really helps to come find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Discord, on Patreon, any of the details you see on screen now or in the description below. That's all super helpful to me. What's not helpful to me is coming onto my videos, watching it, getting all the information, then repackaging that as your own content, uploading it to YouTube and pretending like you figured it all out. I'm looking at you, ex scoundrel. Anyway, let's jump right into this particular video, which is going to be looking at the progression curve for a minor. Now, what I mean by that is that you've watched the first couple of mining videos I've put out, you like, uh, you've enjoyed mining, you've given it a try and you're really enjoying it, and you want to know what's the best way to go from start to, like, advanced mining. You've got yourself a venture, you want to know how to fit it, you want to know when to upgrade to a venture 3 and what skills you should be looking at. So, that's what we're going to cover. Let's jump right in with the skills first of all, up into the skills menu and into industrial technology. Now, as you would imagine, the most important skill as a miner is <laughs> mining. At level 5, this will give you an additional 50% miner yield, better optimal range and a lower activation cost on your lasers. Get this to level 5 right away. Once that's at level 5, I would recommend coming out of all of this and going across to your cruising technology, then down, all the way down, 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 down the list to Industrial Ship Command. Now, in and of itself, this skill isn't overly useful. Um, if you look at the basic stats there, the inertia modifier and the velocity means that your ship is that little bit more agile and easier to use, but that's not why I'm recommending it. Get that skill up to level 5 as well, um, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Now once you've got those uh, up nice and high, look at resource processing. You've got common ore reprocessing, uncommon ore reprocessing, special ore, rare ore, uh, and precious ore. I do apologise as well, I'm aware my voice is very croaky, I've had a couple of attempts um, at getting this video done and I am losing my voice at this point in time. Now, ultimately take a look at each of these reprocessing, look at which one, if you're out in low sec or null sec and you're using rare ores like Mococcit and Bisto, um, or in, under rare ores, things like Crokite or Jasper, find the one of these that is the ore you are using most and get it up to level 4. I would then consider looking at some of the others as well so that you're mining other things and getting a decent reprocessing. Follow that 80-20% rule. Um, get 4 points in each of like rare, uh, rare ore reprocessing. Um, and special or reprocessing, then come back and fill in that fifth one later because the fifth one takes so long to work on and it's only an additional 10%. Get each of those individually. So basically get mining up to level 5, then get industrial ship command to level 5, then work on uh, the, repro uh, the reprocessing skills. This just means that when you reprocess your ore, you get more out of it. Once you're happy with that, then start to move into advanced mining. Now at level 5, you saw that level 5 of the standard mining gives you 50% minor yield, whereas the advanced mining at level 5 will only give you an additional 30%. It's not as big, but there is a reason I'm suggesting getting advanced mining up and why I suggest leaving it to the last skill that you focus on. We'll come to that in a moment. Let's talk now about fitting your Venture 3. So let's jump into the fitting menu and have a look at the details. Now the reason I'm talking about those skills is, uh, is now here and clear. A standard Venture 1 gives you an additional 100% minor yield and then plus 20% minor yield for each point you have in mining. That means you've got 100% bonus for minor yield just for the ship. You then have 50% bonus for having mining at level 5, and then for having mining at level 5, you get an additional 20% 20 uh, 20 per level. 20 times 5, that's another 100%, that's 150% extra minor yield. The reason we got Industrial Ship Command up is for this bonus here at the bottom. Each level gives you a 5% reduction to your minor duration, meaning at level 5 you have 25% faster lasers. You harvest much more, and you harvest much faster. Well worth skilling into. Now, ultimately, you do also have uh, plus two warp stability. Um, I've covered this in my E-War video. Go watch that as a basic understanding of what's going on there. 
Um, that's a very important video. I'll put that in the description below as well. But long story short, that means you need to have a warp jammer, uh, combined warp jammer strength of three to stop you from warping out of, uh, out of your system. Remember, in any combat situation, as a venture pilot, you should be running. There is no point to ever stop and fight. Remember that. Combat happens, get the heck out of there as quick as you can. Now, let's have a look at the fittings. A standard venture has two standard high slots and a drone tube. Now, mining drones are a thing in EVE Online. They are not yet a thing in EVE Echoes, and I will do a video covering those when they, uh, when they go live. For the meantime, though, we're just going to ignore drones. Don't bother fitting drones. It's an extra button. It's extra things to buy. There's no point ever having them because you're never going to get involved in combat. Mining lasers are what you would fit into your standard high slots, and of course, just go for the best ones that you can fit to your ship. Now, on a standard venture, I can fit two uh, Mark V miners quite comfortably, and um, if you do struggle to fit mining lasers onto a ship, consider skilling into industrial ship engineering, um, as that will improve your capacitor and your power grid of any industrial ships like your venture, thus you can put bigger miners on them. Now for the mid-slot. Mid-slots are uh, often referred to as sub-weapon systems. Since, again, you should never be getting into combat in a venture, um, we're going to leave that empty because there's just no point fitting it out and making your ship more expensive. In the low slots, I would strongly recommend having an afterburner. That's so that when you land in an asteroid belt, you can hit, an, uh, hit your afterburner and quickly get away from the entrance point. Never mine at the entrance point to your asteroid belt just as anyone like me going around doing uh, like trying to shoot out miners is going to land right next to you activate and kill you before you can get away now we talked briefly a moment ago about uh, here the warp stability i also fit a warp core stabilizer to uh, my venture just because so <sighs> This is kind of tricky to explain. Warp stability of plus two means you have a total warp stability of three. The enemy needs to get that to zero to stop you warping. Now, in the game, you currently have warp disruptors that are either strength one or strength two. A strength one will reduce warp stability by one. A strength two will reduce warp stability by two. So, kind of think of it as Adventure has warp stability of three. So you need three low, low power warp jammers to, to stop it going because you've got to get it all the way down to zero. If you have a high strength one that is a strength two warp jammer, then obviously two of those combined, that's two and two is four. That will take the warp stability of three down to zero, thus locking it in place. What the warp core stabilizer does is really, really powerful. You see here, warp jammer strength goes down by one. That means if they're using a high power warp jammer, they, um, it goes from strength two down to strength one. That means you now need three high power warp jammers to stop you getting out of that. That is a huge, huge bonus. Do not leave station without a warp core stabilizer jammed into your venture. It's kind of one of those things you should always have. I'm going to unfit it and you'll see why in a second. Now under rigs, I wouldn't bother fitting rigs to a venture. If you try to unfit a rig later, like you upgrade to a venture three and you unfit a rig, you just destroy it. You can't unfit rigs. Ventures are fairly cheap. Venture 3 is your ultimate goal. So I don't see the point in fitting rigs to a venture. They're so expensive at the moment, rigs, that if you fit them to a venture, you can't take them off to put onto your venture 3 later. It means it's just it, it's stuff that you can't put towards your venture 3 and you don't really need them on a venture. So now Imagine you've skilled all the way up, you've got your five in mining, and you've started to look into advanced, uh, into your advanced mining skill. That is when you are going to start to look at upgrading to a Venture 3. I'm going to pull my Venture 3 out, and we're going to have a look at why I suggest this. So let's close all these menus um, and jump into the fitting menu for the Venture 3. Now, the reason that I suggest waiting for a Venture 3, I've seen a few people go straight in with a Venture 3, um, and start mining with that. It's pointless. Until you have a, uh, until you've got mining at level five, um, and you're working on advanced mining, you're better off in a venture. Simply because a venture has the uh, the standard bonus of 100% miner yield, um, and then at mining five, you've got an additional 100% uh, there. That's your 200% for your miner yield plus the skill. The the Venture 3 only gets bonuses once you hit minor yield, uh, once you hit advanced mining bonus. So once you start skilling into advanced mining, that's when the Venture 3 starts coming into its own. That's when you should start looking at upgrading into a Venture 3. 
And that does mean that, for example, I'm currently sitting at mining five and then advanced mining four. I've got 200% minor yield for the ship itself. Um, I've got four points in advanced mining. So that's an additional 80%, that's 280% plus the, I think it's 25% for advanced mining skill is now 305%. And the 50% for standard mining being at level 5, whew, that works out at, what, 355% minor yield. That is a huge bonus. And then minus 25% minor duration, because I've got 5 points in Industrial Ship Command, or will have. Now, in regards to how you fit a Venture 3, again, leave the drone tube empty, leave the mid slots empty. There is no real point putting anything there, because as soon as someone arrives in a combat situation, you want to get the heck out. You don't want extra stuff clamming up your power grid. You don't want extra stuff like sort of weighing you down. Fit in three of your best mining lasers in the three top slots, but leave that drone slot empty. Now in the low slot, you'll see I've got something a little bit different here. I've got a Mark V cloaking device. I've still got my afterburner for uh, getting away from that entry point in the asteroid belt. As soon as I land there, I land, I hit that afterburner, and I whack out of there. And then my second point here, which I was going to get down to now, I will have my Mark I warp core stabilizer just to make this incredibly tough to pin down. Thirdly then, as, I, uh, as you see here, I have a cloaking device. As of the recent patch, uh, Adventure 3 gets a minus 80% stealth device reactivate delay and a minus 80% decloak lock delay, meaning that the, uh, the cloaking devices are just so much better on Ventures now. You can see that these things, um, ultimately they do slow you down, they take up a little bit of your power grid, and um, when you pop one of these on, you become considerably harder to target. Um, you, you can kind of sit there in an asteroid belt and not worry as much about being uh, about being targeted and blown up. Don't rely on it, but it does help. Um, it just makes you harder to spot, makes it harder to scan. They have to be closer to you in order to lock on. Um, it does slow you down in movement, so be aware that obviously it's one of those things you want to use it once you're in position. Um, and when you go to jump out of warp, that's when, um, that's when you are going to decloak. Right, well, with all of that covered, let's go into the rigs, because rigs are something I would start to put on Adventure 3. Adventure 3 is kind of your top tier basic mining ship. You're going to want to kit this thing out, and if you're mining properly in Adventure 3, you're going to be making lots of moolah. I'm broke at the moment because I've been fitting out so many other blasted ships for these videos, but there we go. First of all, let's have a look at the mechanical rigs. Straight up, I have a minor circulation accelerator. That gives me a minus 20% adjustment um, to the duration and activation time of my mining lasers. What that basically means is that my mining lasers are cycling faster, I'm harvesting more frequently. But there are, of course, other rigs that we can look at as well. If we go into mechanical rigs and into industrial rigs, um, you can also look at things like minor efficiency upgrades, which give you an additional mining amount bonus. That's additional mining yield. That's well worth going for, simply because like with the mining skill, it just means you get more from mining. You mine faster. Now, the range controller, you can go for additional 20% range um, or additional 20% uh, negative on the activation cost. Those, the range controller and the algid optimizer, I wouldn't really worry about. I would fit the best efficiency upgrade and circulation accelerator that you can onto the system. These can get expensive. I mean, what's a circulator and a circulation accelerator going for these days? Let's see if I can open that on the market. Um, yeah, there we are. About 3 million if you're right out in null sec and 4,850,000 4, here in mass, but they're not cheap. Um, but they are worth equipping, and that's just the basic ones. Get the basic ones on there and then upgrade as you go, as you wish. For your uh, mechanical rigs, those are the only two that I would actually really worry about. Yeah, you can go into things like engineering rigs to increase your capacitor or whatever. I don't bother with it. Stick with just those two um, in, the, uh, in the mechanical rigs. Now, for power grid rigs, um, these are your defensive rigs. And again, there are only two that I would recommend. Um, don't worry about things like shield boosters and things like that. But what we do want to have a look at um, is down here, core defense field extender. That gives you a 20% shield bonus. So if your shield is 1,000, it's now going to be 1,200. It just increases the size of your shield, which makes you more survivable. You're less likely to be one shot out of space get a core defense field extender fitted to your adventure ASAP, then come all the way down to the Trimark armor pumps, and those are the same for your armor. Get the best one of these that you can afford, an additional 20% armor hit point bonus. That just means your armor is bigger as well. A bigger shield, bigger armor, just means more hit points that they have to get through while you warp out. It means you are harder to destroy 
and it, it, it takes longer to, for them to destroy you, meaning you have an easier time aligning and getting out of that situation as quick as possible. So get those rigs fitted. Get the shield extender and the armor extender, then the uh, the circulation accelerator and the addition, one that gives you additional mining yield. Get those fitted as soon as possible. Now, ultimately, that is all you need to worry about when fitting a Venture 3. Again, I've mentioned this briefly before, but just because it's something that I've had numerous people ask me, and if we jump into the market, you'll see that if I go into high slots when it loads, high slots main weapons, and into harvest equipment, yeah, of course, you've got these things here called strip miners, and these look awesome. They're better than your standard mining laser, so of course you want to buy a whole load of those and fit them to your venture, right? Wrong. Don't do this. Now, if I look at something like a projectile weapon turret, you'll see I've got small auto cannons uh, and then medium auto cannons. Medium auto cannons are something that you fit onto, a, sorry, small auto cannons you would fit onto a frigate or destroyer. Medium auto cannons go onto a cruiser or a battle cruiser. Same goes with the harvest equipment. The mining lasers go on the small ships. The strip miners go on mining barges. Now, by mining barges, I will cover this in a strip mining video eventually when I've got the skills um, and the stuff that I need for that. But if we go into industrial ship, and then scroll right the way down to mining barges. Here we are, the Procurer, the Coveter, and the Retriever. These are your mining barges. These are kind of, whereas the Venture are uh, Expedition Frigates, these are mining barges. It's kind of like uh, frigates and cruisers. You stick to just those, not the strip miners, just the standard mining lasers. Strip miners and strip mining skills will not help you in a Venture. Once you get up to a Procurer, that's when we'll start looking at things like uh, strip mining, strip mining lasers, and strip mining skills. But that is another topic for another video, but worth mentioning at this point in time. Do not bother with anything that mentions strip mining if you're in a venture. It's not going to help. Anyway, that just about wraps up everything that I had to say on this particular topic, that is covering the Venture and the Venture 3 and the progression curve as a miner. I do hope you found it useful. Um, <laughs> forgive my croaky voice, as I said, this has taken a couple too many takes than usual. Um, I had a few errors trying to, trying to get this one out, but thank you ever so much for listening to it all the way through. I do hope it has been super helpful for you folks. Other than that, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.